The Portuguese, Britain's oldest ally, are often overlooked when discussing the Peninsular War. Many Brits, like me, can be guilty of focusing on the bravery of our own redcoats and green jackets, while some Spaniards think that they won the war alone. The truth is that the Portuguese were engaged from the start to the finish of the conflict. Their army, battered and dismantled at the beginning, was rebuilt with the help of Britain and went on to become an integral part of Wellington's incredibly effective army. And it wasn't just their army that was at the forefront of the war. Their civilian population was also decimated and brutalised by the French. And, much like the Spanish, they took to the hills to wage a brutal guerrilla war against the invaders that ultimately helped to expel the French. I would love to do an hour-long podcast on the brave Portuguese of the peninsula, but alas, I need to move on and begin my study of other areas of British military history, lots coming up on the show. But I wanted to share with you this fascinating clip from my recent interview with historian Marcus Delapore Beresford, whose distant relative was Marshal Beresford, commander of the Portuguese army. I think we have to be a little cautious because most of the accounts of the war and the war in Portugal are written by British officers from a British perspective. There are a number of accounts which play down the Portuguese contribution and indeed play down the, the sort of almost civilized aspect of Portuguese society. And I think we just need to be very, very careful. There are some Portuguese accounts, but they're quite sparse and not as detailed. There's no doubt in my mind that Portugal by itself could not have rid Portugal of the French and that Wellington's or the British intervention was absolutely crucial. Likewise, though, I think it is unlikely, though not impossible, that Wellington could have rid the Iberian Peninsula of the French without Portuguese assistance. And let me just develop that a bit because you have, of course, um, the British government, at the request of the Portuguese, sends out Beresford to reform and rebuild the Portuguese army in early 1809. The Portuguese army had effectively been dissolved, dismantled by Junot when he captured Portugal or he captured Lisbon at the end of 1807. And the only really decent regiments in the army, which had been neglected a bit, were sent north to fight for Napoleon. Uh, and did so with some distinction until they were virtually dismantled uh, and destroyed in, in the retreat from Moscow. Another aspect which sometimes is overlooked is that the officers in the old Portuguese army, if I could put it like that, how many of them had gone to Brazil with the crown. The whole administration, Portuguese administration, was removed from Portugal to Brazil, leaving in place a regency. So the officer corps had itself suffered a, a, a dispersion to Brazil, to England, to Northern Europe. If the French were ever going to be beaten, it was clear to the British that the Portuguese army needed to be in the field alongside them. A huge effort was therefore made to recruit, reorganise and retrain the Portuguese forces. Leading this effort was Marshal William Carr Beresford. Beresford arrives on the scene in 1809 with the assistance of British officers and Portuguese officers and young Portuguese officers promoted up quite fast, uh, builds up a Portuguese army of some 52,000 men, leaving apart the militia and the ordinanza, the levy en masse, leaving that apart. He builds up this army. Amongst the units raised were Casadores, the brown-coated troops that would serve in Wellington's elite light division. Many of these men were armed with rifles and held their own alongside British units like the 95th. Now it does suffer repeatedly, uh, much to Beresford's frustration, from large-scale desertion. But effectively you have this army which in a very short time shows its mettle. Because at the Battle of Basako it stands in the line. What has happened is that over Christmas 1809-1810, before the French Third Invasion in 1810, Wellington and Beresford inspect the Portuguese regiment. Wellington is so impressed that he decides to brigade the Portuguese with the British. And something which I don't think he ever did with Spanish regiments. He brigades them with the British and from thenceforth they 
perform, I think, very, very well. From then on, they were represented almost every major battle of the war, where they stood firm alongside their British comrades and proved to the French that they were a force to be reckoned with. Wellington knew that he could trust them. And one doesn't want to sound condescending about it because, you know, it's easy to say, well, that was due to the fact that they'd been trained by British officers. They'd now adopted the British regulations, which, of course, assisted, no doubt, because then you had them all acting in concert. But from there on, and at Busaco, he praises them. At Ciudad Rodrigo, he praises them. Even at Salamanca, where they run into a lot of trouble, um, it, Wellington is very supportive of, of the Portuguese. And when he goes to the long march north in 1813, he takes with him all bar, I think, three uh, Portuguese regiments. So he takes virtually the whole Portuguese army with him. And that makes up one third of Wellington's infantry and one sixth of his cavalry. Now, the Portuguese cavalry was never that strong and, and couldn't be used as a heavy cavalry at all. It was more for reconnoitering and those sort of duties. But the significance of it is that one third of his army, uh, of his infantry, is Portuguese. And they perform very creditably at Vitoria. But there is a problem. Uh, one of Wellington's and, and Beresford's most adroit supporters in the Portuguese Regency was Dom Miguel Fortaz. And to him, uh, he was the man who organized things in Portugal for Wellington and Beresford, even when other members of the Regency were lukewarm or even uh, opposed what Wellington was trying to do. But by the end of 1813, the war was a long way from Portugal. It was a thousand kilometers away. And Portugal itself had been destroyed literally destroyed by five years of continual fighting. It, it had lost a huge amount of its population. A lot of its property had been devastated. And there was a distinct cooling uh, in a desire to support the war further. So much so that Wellington gets very worried and he sends Beresford back to Lisbon in October to try and almost rejuvenate the effort from Lisbon because there is a hesitancy. The Portuguese are still training troops in Mafra and the other training sites, but they're not sending them up to replace the Portuguese troops that have been lost in the various battles. And that is why, of course, Beresford is not at the Battle of Bidasoa even. He's back in Lisbon trying to encourage um, eventually, only eventually, in January, do the Portuguese send new recruits up to join Wellington, and then they send more again in March, who arrived probably too late to have been of any great consequence. And Beresford explains to Wellington what the problem is. And the problem is that the Portuguese feel undervalued. They're not being valued by their British allies. And this is causing huge resentment at this stage. And indeed, one of the uh, uh, motions that came forward was a proposal that Beresford should be replaced as commander of the Portuguese forces uh, by a Portuguese, Silveira. And uh, Wellington's having none of that. I mean, he doesn't even rate Silveira and he just says, you know, go away sort of thing. And, you know, you won't have me around if that's what's going to happen, you know. But um, I, I think what is important is that Wellington does respond. And he says, look, I understand this. He says, um, and he makes sure that the Portuguese, both the troops and the officers are praised in his returns, his reports on battles. But he goes further and he writes to the British government and says, get King George to mention them in his addresses to the nation, in any press releases, so that there is this sort of plumassing, if you like, is an Irish word we use, to, to, to encourage the Portuguese. So I, I think that's, that's important. I, I just say about desertion, there is quite a lot of Portuguese desertion in the winter of 1813-14, but it's not to go over to the enemy, I hasten to add, it's to go back to their families in Portugal, <laughs> where, as I say, they're trying to rebuild a shattered society. There is, of course, so much more I would love to talk about regarding both the Portuguese and also the Spanish in the peninsula. But for now, I have to bid you adieu. Please subscribe and comment in the meantime, and I'll be back with more tales rescued from the dustbin of history soon. The Redcoat History Channel is a place where the valour of Britain and our allies is celebrated and not forgotten.